So hello, my name is Alyssa Bohart and I am one of the bear technicians here in uh, for Alberta Parks. And so this winter I've been spending some time looking at some of the data that we've collected over the years. And so I wanted to present on those findings that we've looked at for our initial research. Um, and so the research that we've been looking at is grizzly bear den site selection in Kananaskis country, Alberta. So just a bit of background on grizzly bears, as some of you may have noticed, especially if you're spending a lot of time here in Kananaskis, we're seeing uh, quite an increase in recreation in the area. So we're seeing a lot more vehicular traffic. We also see a lot more people traffic. And the activities that people are doing out here include things like camping and hiking and biking. And then in the wintertime, these recreation activities also look like skiing or snowshoeing and sometimes snowmobiling in the area as well. And so with this increased activity, it really made um, a scientist kind of wonder, how is this impacting wildlife? Um, and wildlife already face a number of challenges, as you can imagine, um, especially with changes in seasonal access to different types of food. And so, for example, in the winter, uh, animals out here will have decreased access to food. And so one of the ways that they adapt to wintertime is we have some animals that will hibernate or in, for the case of bears, it's called torpor. And so some hibernators will use dens to help protect them from the elements. And so there's some key factors for dens that make them successful. And so a den needs to be stable, it needs to be dry, and it also needs to be insulated. And so one of the species out here that uses hibernation or torpor is a grizzly bear. And grizzly bears will require suitable dens um, to help them conserve their energy because while they're in the den, they're not eating anything. They're mostly just resting in the winter time until there's more spring food available. Um, and this also increases their chances of survival when they come back out in the springtime and so they can have access to more food at that time. But it's really, really important to female bears because females, this is when they are um, giving birth to their cubs. They also have to keep them warm at the time during winter time and then also they're feeding and nursing their cubs during this time too so it's really important um, successful denning to have healthy reproduction of cubs and healthy cubs that come out in the springtime and the cubs will have a better chance of survival during the summer so that leads me to the objectives of our research. And so um, using the data that we have access to in the area, we wanted to answer kind of these questions. And so we wanted to identify the preferred denning habitat of the grizzly bears that we have data on in the area. We also wanted to try and investigate the effects of human recreation on denning activity for bears. And then ultimately we wanted to use this information to help inform management and mitigate human wildlife conflict, which is a really important um, area that we research and try to mitigate in this area. And that's a really important part of my job. And so just a bit of um, kind of information on Kananaskis, especially for people who are maybe not as familiar with the area in Alberta. Um, so this area is over 4,000 kilometers squared. As I kind of alluded to, we've had quite an influx of visitors. So we typically have about 4 million visitors annually. And this is rising as we see, especially during the pandemic. And Throughout this whole area, we do have recreation, but we also have other activities taking place, such as um, commercial tourism. We also have grazing leases, so cattle are sometimes in the area. And there's also just commercial transportation of goods. Um, and then I just thought it'd be important to point out, not all of this land is protected. We only have 60% of this land protected. And so the data that we used to collect, um, we had 39 individual grizzly bear den sites. And so this was collected between 1980 and uh, 2021. And the way that this was uh, collected was either through the GPS collars that we would put on bears. And so then the bears kind of hang out in the same area during the winter time. And then we know that's the location of their den. Um, but in the older studies, because we haven't had GPS collars for that long, the older studies, we would have people go out on foot and identify um, just as they're walking to identify the different types of dens. And then they would just take a GPS location of those dens. And so that's how we got all our denning data, but then we wanted to look at the different types of habitat factors, what's influencing these bears and their den site selection. And so this is the four different types of uh, categories that we chose for our different types of habitat factors. And so we have our first being the topographic. And so these four factors are elevation, slope, 
um, crown closure and compound topographic index. And so I think the elevation and slope should be pretty self-explanatory, but uh, for crown closure, that's just kind of a scientific term. When we're looking from an aerial or a bird's eye view, we look down on how much tree cover there is in the area. And then compound topographic index is just a fancy term for kind of the drainage and the wetness of the landscape. So if the bears are on kind of a higher elevation or slope, then we're having a lot of drainage and so there's not water collecting where they would have their dens. And some of the other factors we looked at um, were distance to stream, distance to river. Uh, we looked at solar radiation, so how much sun that area is getting. We also looked, at, uh, we calculated snow load index, and so this takes into account the predominant wind direction, and so how much of that wind is blowing off the snow, or how much snow is actually collecting in the area. And then also the roughness of the landscape, so is it quite jagged or is it a bit more smooth for the bears? And then for our land cover class, um, we just simply looked at grass or herb and then shrub. And then kind of more important to part of our investigation, looking at how humans are impacting dens, we looked at these different factors. So distance to facility, distance to roads, um, distance to OHV trails, and OHV trails included also snowmobile trails in the winter time, and then distance to hiking trails as well. And then um, this is a fancy term for our measure for food. Um, this is just an index that scientists sometimes use for measuring types of food. And so it's called dynamic habitat indices. And basically it's just the calculation of how much vegetation and productivity is happening. So how much kind of greenness? Is it a good year with like lots of vegetation or maybe it's a more poor year? And so that's kind of um, how we measured food for bears. And then this is getting into the real scientific stuff. <laughs> so. Yeah, what we use to calculate is a resource selection function. And so I'll just quickly go over this because I know maybe it's not the most interesting to non-scientific folks, but it's just a fancy calculation we kind of use. Um, so we have kind of our use versus our available points. And so our use points are actually our den sites. And then our available points, we just create a random sample. And so the idea is this random sample is the areas that bears could have denned, but didn't end up denning in. And then this is the fancy equation if there's any math nerds who are paying attention to this uh, presentation. And then um, we used a K-fold cross-validation also for any modeling kind of nerds out there. And so I'll just briefly go over the results that we found. And these are just initial findings. We are hoping to collect more data. And um, so these results could possibly change with more data. So just want to keep that as a caveat. But this is what we found so far. Um, so within our top model, uh, th these were all the factors that came out as strong for the bears. And so these are what are important to bear denning as we can find so far. Um, so we know crown closure, so kind of the percent of cover, the tree cover that bears like. Um, so bears typically like more crown cover. And then we found that food resources was important to bears. Um, we also have slope and elevation, which is in line with what other people are finding as well. And then we also had um, grass and herb and shrub come out is important for bear denning selection as well. And then this is just a graph that kind of explains this. Um, so with selection, when we're looking at if a bear selecting or avoiding something, um, what we find here is if you have the zero line that basically says that bears aren't selecting for and they're not avoiding it. But if we have any points that are above the zero, that means they're selecting for, so they like that area. Or anything below that, that means that are, they avoid that area, they don't like that area. And so we can see that crown clo closure they're selecting for so they like having tree cover um, DHI or the food they like having food which shouldn't be a surprise for us and then we can see that shrub they're kind of avoiding the shrub types areas and then um, what we typically do in science is we want to look at other papers and other studies that have looked at grizzly bears we want to see is this the same that other scientists are finding and this kind of gives us clues if we're on the right track or maybe we have a different study system and so we also have to keep in mind when we're comparing to different areas that um, the different areas might have different habitats they might have different preferences for bears and so there might be some similarities and differences um, so just to kind of sum up these are the other papers that we compared to and so we're 
we're finding a lot of the similar things in other papers. So we can see in the top one, this is other studies in the northern Rockies of Alberta, and they found that um, tree canopy cover was important too, as well as elevation and food. Um, when we look at a study in Northwest Territories, that's a different type of habitat type than our bears. And so they selected for shrub and whereas in our study, our bears seem to avoid the shrub areas. Um, and then we're looking at even in Europe, in Romania, we're finding that even there's some similarities there where the bears are choosing crown cover. Um, they also choosing elevation and slope. And then a study that looked in Alaska, which is uh, pretty similar to our bear types as well. Um, they also found that uh, slope and elevation were important. So we're finding pretty much the same things. And so it kind of speaks to how bears like to um, choose the same things for their dens, which is pretty cool. And um, the other question that people might be asking, because it was an important part of our project, is what does human disturbance look like and what did that model look like? Um, and so this is just a reminder, these are the factors that we looked at. Um, yeah, and so looking at this graph, this is similar to the previous graph I showed. So just a reminder, if anything's crossing the zero, even the lines, um, that means that they're not selecting nor are they avoiding anything. And so we can see for distance to facilities, roads, and the trails, we're we're not seeing avoidance or selection, but um, what we see is OHV trails it looks like they're selecting for. And so in scientific terms, we call this, um, we have a term for this, and so the scientific term is correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation. And so what I think is actually happening here is we might just be seeing that there's OHV trails near den sites, but that doesn't mean that bears are technically selecting for the trails. And so this is something that we want to investigate further just based on um, the these results currently. And so looking at those results it kind of makes, uh, it might prompt the question, okay, is human disturbance really affecting bear denning? And so I think the question that we're asking ourselves now is are the measures that we're using in our models accurately portraying human use on the landscape and intensity of use on the landscape? And so some of the things that we're looking at developing is using Strava data to kind of measure the intensity of use in the areas on the trails and stuff like that. And so hopefully once we have that data all collected, we can incorporate that and we think that'll be a more accurate measure and then we can maybe get um, better accurate results to that question that we're looking at. Um, yeah and so this is still a work in progress as I've said before and so hopefully soon we'll have another presentation to update everybody on the results that we'll find. And so in conclusion, I want to thank everybody for paying attention to this presentation. I know sometimes science can be a little bit dense, but hopefully you can understand a lot of uh, what I was talking about today. Um, just conclusions, so just going over and refreshing everybody's mind, we found that tree cover is important, food availability, elevation and slope, and no shrubs are important for the bears in our area and their dense selection. And we want to keep investigating uh, human disturbance on the denning of bears and seeing if we can get maybe better measurements to test that. And yeah, we'll be hoping to collect more den data. And so in science, more data, the better. And we know if we get more samples, then we're getting uh, kind of better science, more accurate results. And so we're hoping to keep collecting more den data so we can keep this project going. And with that, I just want to acknowledge all our funders. And so we have Protect the Park, who has con contributed a lot of money to this program and the collars that we were able to put on our bears. And also the government of Alberta, which this project is run through in Alberta parks and so we couldn't do any of this research without all the funding and all of the valuable people who work for the park and so um, with that yeah I just want to thank everybody for listening and if you have any questions after this I'd always be happy to chat and so you can always reach me by email at the bottom there